Hello, happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday wisdom time. I know I was just here on Monday with some Monday motivation, but this has got to be shared. Um, this one has to be shared. I was not, I didn't do this to share. I did this for my own self, but it needed to, this needs to be shared. So I hope you will join me. If you will, you go ahead and put this on your timeline. Tell your friends. I'm sending this there because I think, I know this is something we got to talk about. This is absolutely something we got to talk about. And I titled this, what did I title this? No, I already forgot. Look, what did I put the title on this? Lord help me here. Uh, the weight is not a punishment. The weight is not a punishment. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. Who, who's in a waiting season with me right now? Who, who's in a waiting season with me right now? Uh, if that's you, raise your hand. <laughs> say me, say me. Um, let's just call it what it is. We're in a waiting season right now. And it sucks. It sucks to have to wait. It sucks to have to be prayerful, be faithful, be quiet sometimes. And it really, 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 really sucks when all the people around you don't seem to have to be waiting for anything. It seems like they got like the hotline to God kind of thing, you know, where they pray and it's like, there it go. There it is. She got it. Oh, he got that one. Oh, they got that one over. The, right. You, you've been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's me. Uh, I'll own it. I will put both hands in the air and maybe a foot too, because yeah, that's, that's where we're at right now. And if you are there, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to me too. I'm talking to me too. Yeah, they got the red phone. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't know what the red phone reference is, you need to watch some superhero movies, <laughs> right? They got the hotline right up to God. And he's like, your prayer is answered. Your prayer is answered. You get an answer prayer there. Oprah, you get it. Right? Right? That you feel like that. We feel like that. Mm-hmm. I get it. I, I'm sitting in it. I'm sitting in it. And this was my, here, let me just show you. This was my, this morning, uh, conversation with God. This was my conversation with God. So if, if you don't know, or if you've never watched me before, I pray by writing because I have some wicked ADHD, super fun. Uh, got diagnosed last year. It was great. It was, it was super great. But it also makes me understand why I am the way I am and the way I do a lot of things. Uh, so I pray by writing. Otherwise, I am like, oh, it, it's a mess. I can't keep my brain on one subject for very long. So anyway, I pray by writing. And this is my, my conversation with God this morning. And I'm going to, I said I might tell you a little bit about how I talk to God. And one of the biggest things I do when I talk to God is I ask questions. I ask questions and my questions started out. Why is it? I always have to wait on prayer. What am I not doing or doing wrong? That leaves me waiting. Like that was my question. And I didn't come at it from a mean perspective. I didn't come at it from a whiny perspective. I didn't come at it from a woe is me perspective. Like it was a legitimate question because I started this out with something I'm not going to share, but it was a thank you for answering a prayer because it's been since April last year that I've been praying for this thing. Um, and I'm like, Lord, why do I always have to wait? Why do I always have to wait? How many of you ask him that? How many of you have asked, Lord, why I always got to wait? And if you don't believe in God, whoever it is that you believe in, you've been asking them, why do I always got to wait? Why is it always that I have to wait? What am I doing wrong? What am I not doing right? Like, what do I need to do? And that's a very human question. We have created a society that says that if it's not working, it must be something we're doing or not doing. We, we don't live in a, a world where we understand that we don't have to do everything. We always think that there's one more thing we have to do. There's something that we're not doing. Like we live in that world. And so it's a very human question, right? It's a very human question to ask, Lord, what am I doing wrong? Or what am I not doing right? Or what do I need to be doing? Right? And this is very much a question that we have all asked. And if you say you haven't, I'm gonna call you a liar because I know you've been asked. I know you asked. I know you asked. 
I absolutely know you've asked because I know you're human and I know you live in 2021 with me and I know you live in the same society that I live in where we focus on what we're doing to get us where we want to go. I know you do and it's okay and it's okay if you're not ready to admit that yet but I think you're going to have to own that first. You're going to have to be like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, I've been asked that question. I did it. I asked that question and you know what? It's okay. You're allowed to ask these questions. Um, the religion I grew up in didn't overtly say don't question God, but they did say don't question God. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that is that is wrong. Now, you don't have to be a brat about it, right? Like God's not going to answer a whiny four-year-old's question. But if you come to him as his child, if you come to him with, Lord, I'm broken and I'm hurting. What is going on? Why? Like my question was, why is it always that I have to wait for what I pray for? That I literally have it written down right there. And it's very much in the way I would say it. Why do I always have to wait for what I pray for? Here's the answer I got. You're trying to force it or do it in your own strength instead. And I'm having a conversation with God. Because those are the words of God. They're written in a different hand here. I said, God, I'm only trying to do it myself because you take so long to act. It sucks having to wait. If things move faster, I wouldn't try to DIY it. Yeah? Right? You say that kind of stuff. And if you're not brave enough to admit it, I am. I'm brave enough to say, Lord, if you would move a little faster. Lord, if you would hurry on up, I wouldn't have to DIY it. Y'all remember Sarah and Hagar and Abraham? Like, they were going to have a kid. Right? God said, you're going to have a kid. God took too long. What'd they do? They DIY'd it in their own strength. We're just as human as the saints of the Bible, and they're just as human as we are now. The same problems they have then are the same problems we are having now. So somebody needs to get off their high horse and be like, oh my God, Erica is totally not spiritual because she's questioning God. No, girl, I'm real. I'm real. I'm I'm 100% real right here. And I know you're having the same conversations. You're just not willing to talk about them yet. And I want to encourage you to have these kind of conversations with God and literally be straight up, Lord, I'm only trying to do it myself because you take too long. It sucks having to wait. If things move faster, I wouldn't try to DIY. You know you thought it. I'm just brave enough to say it, okay? And here's what he came back with. And I didn't like this. I didn't like this. I didn't like this one at all. Erica, the better you learn to wait, the faster things will move. The more you learn to wait, the faster things will move. The better you wait, the faster things will move. So I'm talking to me. I'm, talk, I'm talking to the woman in this mirror right here. I'm talking to me and I'm talking to you. It's not what we want to hear, but it's what we got to hear today. The better you wait, the faster things will move. I want you to think about like when people are trying to get pregnant, right? The minute they give up, the minute they're like, you know what? It's going to be in God's timing. They get pregnant. You know, it's true. The minute they're like, all right, Lord. All right, Lord. All right. I'm done. I'm done trying on my own self. I'm done with this. Yeah. And this is not universal. Y'all know there's, there's always an outlier there, but literally like most of them, like the minute they're like, all right, Lord, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. It happens. And, and that happens in our whole life. And it is so frustrating. Ain't it? Like you just, we're just going to be real honest today. Like it's frustrating. And if you say it's not frustrating, I'm going to say you lying. We're just going to call it what it is. And uh, you know, we got to be honest. We got to be real with that. So how do we take that same, Lord, I'm done attitude and, and put it toward the rest of our lives? Whitney, it happened to me. How do we take that same, Lord, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm done trying. I'm done forcing it in my own strength. How do we take that and put it to our whole life? Look, I don't have the answer on that one. I'm still working on that one. I'm still, I still don't know. But that's going to be my question for you. How do you, I want you to ask yourself this week, girl, how do I take this, I'm done with the struggle and the force and put it to my whole life? How do you do that? What's your plan? What are you going to do for that? How are you going to uh, recognize when you're very, very, very busy, very busy uh, over here trying to do it yourself, Rosie A. Good morning. Um, what do you do? Like, how are you going to apply that, Lord, I'm done trying to force this sucker to your whole life? I don't know. I don't have that answer. 
But these are important questions that we need to ask ourselves. And so me and God, we kept talking here. And I was like, Lord, I don't like the feeling of waiting. It hurts. It makes me doubt. It makes takes me to terrible places. I don't want to have to wait. Fear takes over when I wait. After fear comes anger and then force. And it's nearly, I couldn't read my own handwriting. It's nearly impossible to control them. And frankly, I don't want to control them sometimes. I want what I've asked for to come quickly. I don't want to wait. My ego has an impossible time with waiting. Michelle, you can say that. Michelle said it's simply tell God I put it all in his hands. Michelle, you can say that all day long. And I know people who say that, but walking out what you've said is different. That's the religion that I grew up in. And, um, that's real hard. That's real hard to walk out. And and we're here to be honest on my page where we're straight and honest with, you know what? I can say something all day long. I can say that all day long. But walking it out and living it out when I'm behind closed doors, when I'm in my own house, when I'm in my own head, that is where the rubber meets the road. That is where it's very difficult to do. And it's time that we as, as people, especially people of God, be that kind of honest. I can say anything I want on a Facebook Live, but then I got to get off of this Facebook Live and then I got to go out here and live it. Then I got to live it in my own house. Then I got to live it in my own heart. That is easy to say. That is hard to live. And that is what we're going to talk about today. It is hard to live this out. And anybody who tells you that it's, it's easy to live out, again, I'm going to call you a liar. I'm going to straight up call you a liar because it ain't true. It ain't true. You know, we are saved by grace, absolutely. And we have the Holy Spirit indwelling within us, absolutely. But I still walk around with this pink stuff right here. You still walk around with whatever color skin you're wearing over there. And it is hard. And we still have an enemy who fights us. And that's where we're going to next. I wrote down, it's in all caps, waiting feels like a personal attack. And that was just clarity for me right there. And maybe that is clarity for someone else. When you are waiting, especially when you're waiting for a while, I can't find my mascara. What did I do with my mascara? When you are doing for a while, when you have to wait for a while, it begins to feel personal. Don't it? Doesn't it? You know it does. It begins to feel absolutely personal. It feels like you're the only one waiting. It feels like you are unloved. It feels like the Lord ain't hearing you. It feels, you hear that word? It's a five letter word uh, with the S on it. It's four without it. Feel is a dirty four letter word sometimes. It feels like the weight is an absolutely personal attack. Like it's coming for me. Only me. Only me has to wait. Only me cannot get this thing that I've prayed for. Only me cannot get my prayer answered by God because he don't like me. Only me. Because waiting feels like a personal attack. And if you're honest, you'll admit it too. You don't have to say it here in the comments. You don't have to say it here in the comments. But you need to say it to yourself. You need to tell yourself. Yep, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what it feels like. And it sucks, and I know that, and I don't like it either, and I don't want to wait either. <sighs> and I wrote here, it feels like the, I'm the only one having to wait. And I feel like I'm being forced to wait because I'm doing something wrong or something that is not right, and the waiting feels like a punishment. And if you'll be honest, you've been here. And if you haven't been here yet, you will. You're human. And so I asked again, why does it feel like the weight is a punishment? And this is where clarity really came in. Why does it feel like waiting is a punishment? Number one, because a parent would punish me by making me wait. I didn't get earrings. I don't know where my earrings are. Because a parent has punished us in the past by making us wait. Because in the world, in the human world, people punish us by making us wait. Leaders have made me wait. Uh, bosses have made me wait, right? So other people have made me wait. And people use wait as a punishment. Another reason, I have punished people by making them wait. I have. I'll own it. You have punished people by making them wait. We have punished people by making them wait. Whatever it is that they're waiting on, 
humans have made other people wait out of punishment. And in our world and in our own minds, we think that God's wait is, is equated to a human punishment. Listen, if you think that, you're normal. Uh, we live in this world. We have a human body, right? People make us wait out of punishment, and we expect God to be the same. But not only that. Here's where it gets real dark, real deep here. I have punished myself by making me wait on the good things, on joy, on fun, on peace, on excitement, on celebration. I have made myself wait out of punishment. You haven't achieved that arbitrary thing over there. Therefore, you cannot celebrate yet. You haven't hit $100,000 yet this year. Therefore, you cannot celebrate your financial growth. You haven't hit your 50-pound weight loss goal. Therefore, you can't celebrate your 14-pound weight loss. You make yourself wait too. And we think God is like us. We think God is like us. We make us wait. I know you've done it. I hear it every day and it gets on every one of my nerves. It gets on every one of the nerves that I have left. And it, it bugs me to death. So if you're saying this, please stop. Y'all, I'm so excited. I've lost three pounds. I know I got 70 more to go, but I've lost. Stop that. You're taking away your joy and you're taking away your celebration. Just say, I've lost three pounds. I'm so excited. But we think God is like us. When in reality, we are supposed to strive to be like God. We are supposed to strive to be like God. He's not like us. God doesn't make us wait out of punishment. So the weight is not a punishment. That's what I'm here to tell you today. The weight is not a punishment. The weight is not a personal attack. It's not. And I, I get that that is hard to believe. I even wrote down, I believe that like 50%. 50%. Like, I'm giving you 50% on the belief on that one. And you know what? Um, he didn't ask me to be perfect. God doesn't ask you to believe perfectly. Remember the father with the demon-possessed child? He said, help my unbelief, right? Um, God will take 50%. Right? He'll take it. And uh, he, in, in our weakness, his strength is manifest. And so when I'm willing to say, Lord, I don't believe it all the way, he's like, okay. That's where my strength comes in. That's where my strength gets you to the other 50%. Okay? So stop this nonsense of I've got to have 100% faith. No, he didn't ask for 100% faith. We are made perfect because of the sacrifice of Jesus and our acceptance of his salvation. God doesn't ask us to be perfect. He just asks us to believe. And he didn't say you had to believe all the way. I gave him 50% this morning. 50%. 50%. That's what I had to give. And I'm like, Lord, I believe that about 50%. I literally wrote it down here. <laughs> I, I only believe that 50% because it feels 100% like a punishment. And then the Lord asked me this question. What about your enemy? What about your enemy? What about your enemy? And I'm like, what about my enemy? Because sometimes we forget our enemy is in this world. If you're a Christian, you have an enemy. End of story. Here's what I wrote. The devil has me convinced it's a punishment for all that I've done wrong as a leader. Because what I'm waiting for is leadership growth. Telling me I have to wait for what I've asked for until I do better. The enemy has me convinced that this is a punishment. And that I'm having to pay penance for what I did wrong before I can ever have what I've asked for. Does that sound like religion? That sounds like religion to me. That sounds like religion to me. That's not the God of the Bible. He doesn't ask for that. We are made perfect because of the sacrifice of Jesus, and he doesn't ask us to pay penance. Instead, he asks us to come and ask repentance, forgiveness. God doesn't make us pay penance for what we did wrong. He asks us to ask forgiveness and to repent and to change our ways. He told the woman at the well, go and sin no more, right? He didn't say, oh, you got to go over here and you got to do all this charity work and you got to do all. No. Mm -mm. Since we're forgiven, he said, don't do it again. Right. This is the Jesus that we serve. We're getting deep in here, y'all. I hope you got your seatbelts on today because I am attacking religion left, right and upside down because I'm sick of religion and of the enemy telling me I'm being punished for what I did wrong. Mm. 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 I, we, we, we ain't about that no more. We ain't about that no more. So your weight is not a punishment for what you did wrong. 
Your weight's not a punishment, period. But it's surely not what the enemy in your own head has said to you. Oh, you having to wait because you did that wrong. You having to wait because you ain't done that right yet. That's not what this is about. I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. I don't know about y'all, but I got goosebumps. <sighs> and I said, and that sucks. And I believed him in his lies. I don't want to believe them anymore. But they feel, again, there's that four-letter word. They feel so true. I have internalized them so deeply. I don't know how to believe anything else right now. And God was like, okay. There was no shame. There was no condemnation. There was none of the stuff that people come with. There is nothing about God that people come with. He didn't be like, well, you got to believe it. God didn't say that. He said, okay. He said, okay. And then he asked me, do you want to believe that the devil is a liar? I'm going to cry because God is so kind when he speaks to us. God doesn't speak to us like people do. His question was, do you want to believe? Do you want to believe? It's not, do you believe, but do you want to, do you want to believe that the devil is a liar? I said, yes, I know he is. I know he has lied to me time and again. I know it. God said, okay. The next question was, do you want to believe that your weight is not a punishment? I said, yes. And then of course, me and me, I'd be like, God, it just feels, it just feels so hard to believe but I want to believe. It just feels hard to believe. Again, there's that word. I'm so tired of that F word. I'm so tired of it. I, we got to take that out of the equation sometimes, dudes. And so I'm gonna tell you a few things. After all of that, I hope you're here for it. One, feelings are not facts. Boy, I know, I know. I'm, 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 I just, I just, but it feels, but it feels, it feels like I'm being punished. It feels like I've done something wrong and I deserve this. It feels, I know that, but we have a God that's greater than our feelings. Yes. And girlfriend, guy friend, friend. I, we have to come out of that four letter word status. Fe feelings are here. God is here. We have to come out of the feelings. We can take them to God and say, God, it feels like this. God, it feels like this. It feels like this. But when God says to you, what you going to believe? Your feelings or your father? I was like, Lord, why are you going to ask me that question? Lord, why are you going to ask me that question? You already know. He's like, no, I need you to know. What are you going to believe? Your feelings or your father? I'm going to ask you what I got to ask. And, and you're going to need to answer it. You don't have to answer it here, but, but I'm going to need you to answer it for you. What are you going to believe? Your feelings or your father? It's not cute. It's not cute, but we got to answer that question. So answer it for yourself. And, and this is one of those where you got to answer it often. Because tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to still be in my waiting season. Because this ain't going to end today. And I'm going to have to answer, what am I going to believe, my feelings or my father, about this waiting season that I can't seem to get out of? I'm going to have to answer this again and 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 again. And again. I'm going to have to keep answering, Erica, what are you going to believe, your feelings or your father? And you are going to have to do the same. What are you going to believe? Your feelings or your father? Now listen, God talks to everybody. He talks to me very differently. He's very little, he's a little sassy with me and I love it because I'm a little sassy back and it's great. Uh, but you can have these same conversations with God. You can ask questions. He can ask you questions, but you got to sit still. You got to listen. You got to be willing to answer the hard questions. And then he's like, okay, so um, from what you know about me, why would I have you wait? Now listen, I don't know everything about God. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I ever will. I'm st Again, I'm wearing this pink suit around here, okay? Um, I don't know everything about God. But his question was, from what you know about me, 
why would I have you wait? And so here's what I got to grow, to grow. Um, because if you wait well, you grow well. And if you wait badly, you don't grow at all. So just know that. Uh, to grow, to have a more powerful story. The wait times of my story are the very strongest points. The times when I've had to wait and I've told people about it, um, those are the ones that people resonate with the most. The wait is the strongest part of my story. And so he's given me a story. He's given me a bigger, better, stronger story to tell, to encourage people, to tell them that the wait is not the end, that the wait is not a punishment, i.e. I, I'm here right now. Okay, why else would God have me wait? To learn more and better coping skills for the mental health that I struggle with. Uh, because when you're so busy, let's just put it that, when you're so busy, you don't have time to take care of your own health your own mental health sometimes. I got there. You all been, if you had been there, again, I'm going to call you a liar. Because um, in the wait season, I have more time to learn more and better coping skills for my own mental health. Another reason, another reason he had me, and this was, this was very personal for me. Another reason he had me wait was to have time to deconstruct all the religious nonsense in my life and process it all. So that I can break down what religion told me about my God, which is a lie. So that I can get to the root of who my God and my Jesus are. So that I can know them fully and completely. Because it is in these hard seasons, it is in these wait seasons where I spend more time with God. What if I'm waiting so I can break all that was a lie off and away from me? And that one was for me personally. Not everyone that's going to be true for. Um... Another reason he's having me wait is to gain the strength and to be free of the fear to be completely honest about my story and my life. If you haven't heard my story, uh, a year ago I was suicidal. A year ago it was only because of my husband that I'm still here. It was only because I went to intensive therapy for 30 days that I am still here. And this wait season, it's here to make me brave. Because that's not something I really want to talk about. That's not something I really want to tell everybody, that I was that low and that broken. But the wait season is, is teaching me to be brave, to be fearless, and to talk about it. What is your wait season teaching you? And then the last one is to re release all of the fear, bitterness, and resentment that I've been carrying around for years. That's why I'm having to wait. Everyone's wait is going to have different reasons. So why is he having you wait? And you need to ask God, why are you having me wait? And then just shut up and listen to him. Honest to God, if you spend all your time talking to him, that's not a relationship. That's like, that, that's useless. He wants an intimate relationship with us and relationships go both ways. And we have to shut up and listen sometimes, right? Like there's... Every friendship you have, if it's one-sided, you don't like it. And so uh, maybe you need to ask God, why are you having me wait? Why are you having me wait? And, and, and get your sassiness out of the way. I know, I'm sassy too. But we got to get that out of the way and, and just listen. And just listen. Just listen for what he has to tell us. Um, so here's the last thing that I wrote down. Guys, this was my whole conversation with God this morning. Get ready, seat belt on, seat belt on. You're not gonna like this one. The weight has felt like a punishment because I have allowed it to feel that way. Straight honest. The weight has felt like punishment because I've allowed it to feel that way. Your weight has felt like punishment because you have allowed it to feel that way. Believe your father over your feelings. Understand the devil is a liar. And he knows where to hit you where you're vulnerable. Accept it. Be okay with it. No guilt. No shame. No religious condemnation. None of that. We ain't got time for that nonsense. Accept what is. All right. It's felt like a punishment because I let it feel like one. All right. Well, I mean, that ain't fun, but it is what it is. I can't change it. The past is done. It's felt like a punishment because I've allowed it to feel like a punishment. I focused on the feelings versus the promises of my father and friend I know how hard this is I had to eat it first like I had to eat this humble pie a little eye first um it was not fun 
It's not fun. It's not fun at all. But you got to do it. You got to do it. And whatever it is that you're feeling, if, if, if whatever you're feeling, um, you got to own it. You got to be like, all right, you know, I did it. Okay, we done. And then just change it. It, it really is. It, it really is that simple where you just get up every day and you're like, all right, feelings, you're not going to defeat me today. You're not going to defeat me today. Feelings of punishment or inadequacy or I need to do more, be more. You're not going to defeat, defeat me today. We're done. We're done with that nonsense. And just, just come from that. It's not a one and done type of thing. I'm going to get up tomorrow and feel defeated again because I'm still human. I'm still human. And I'm going to get up on Friday and still feel defeated. I'm going to wake up on Sunday, go and serve at church, and I'm probably still going to feel defeated. Like, it, it, it's human life. It's human life. And if you'll cut yourself some slack, give yourself the same grace and love that God gives you, it'll be easier. It'll be easier. So, that was a whole sermon today. <laughs> That was a sermon and a half today. That was mostly for me. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for putting this on your timeline and sharing with others because I think we all need to hear it. <sighs> Ask yourself, what are you going to believe? Your feelings or your father? You can do this. You can do this. All right. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you later.